Okay, for this tutorial, we're going to learn a little bit about functions and relations. Now, to start this off, let's look at an example of a relation. Now, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. For example, here, with example one, we have four ordered pairs in a set. So these ordered pairs make up a relation. Now let's try plotting this relation on a graph. So here's our graph. So first we have the ordered pair 3, negative 1. So let's go over to 3, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1. So we do the input first along the horizontal axis and then the output along the vertical axis. So 3, negative 1. And we'll label that point. So there's 3, negative 1. Now let's plot negative 2, 0. So we'll start with the input. So we'll go negative 2 along the horizontal axis. And then 0. Well, 0, we wouldn't be moving anywhere on the vertical axis. So we stay right here. So that is our ordered pair, negative 2, 0, from this relation. Now let's do 0, 4. So we start with the input of 0. 0 is just going to keep us right here. And then go up 4. So there's our ordered pair, 0, 4. Now for our last point in the relation, we have negative 5, negative 1. So we'll start with the input. We'll go negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll go negative 1 on the vertical axis. So that would be about right here. So now we label that point. Negative 5, negative 1. So that's just the basic idea of a relation and how to graph them. Now let's take a look at another aspect of relations. So for example two, we're gonna use the same relation, but we're gonna find the domain and range of the values within the relation. Now, first of all, what it means by finding a domain is we want to see all the possible values for the input within this relation. So in this relation we have, let's start with the least. So we have 3, negative 2, 0, negative 5. Well the least number in the domain is negative 5. So negative 5 is part of the domain. And then we'll do the next least one. So negative 2. And then the next number in our domain would be 0. And then the last one would be 3. So the domain is all the different inputs within our relation. And for these four ordered pairs, we have a domain of negative 5, negative 2, 0, and 3. Now the range is very similar, except we're not going to be looking at the inputs this time. We're going to be looking at the outputs within the relation. So again, we could start with the least number. So it looks like that would be negative 1. Now if you notice, negative 1 shows up twice. Now this is okay, but we don't need to write it down twice. We just need to say that negative 1 is within the range. And then the next number would be 0. So that's also in our range. As well as 4. So within this relation we have here in example 2, we have three different possible values for our range. We have negative 1, 0 and 4. 
Now that we have a basic understanding of domain and range and how to find them in a relation, let's use a mapping diagram to see how the values from the domain relate to the values of the range. So let's look at a few examples to help illustrate this. So for example three, we'll still use this same relation we have here, which is still gonna have the same domain and range. But now let's make a mapping diagram with these values. So the, the basic idea behind a mapping diagram is we want to connect the specific inputs from our domain to their respective output values from the range. For example, this three has an output of negative one. So we'll go to three from our domain and we'll connect it to the negative one from the range. Now similarly, we'll do the same thing with negative two, zero. So we have an input of negative two from our domain and it has an output of zero, which is from the range. And then also with zero four, we have an input of zero that has an output of four. And then for our last ordered pair from the relation, we have negative five, negative one. So we'll look at negative five from our domain and match it up with its respective output from the range. So negative one. So that's the basic idea behind a mapping diagram and what it would look like. Now let's try it one more time with example four. So for the domain, we have negative four, one, and zero. Now if you notice, the one is repeated in the relation, but we only need to put it down once. So for the domain, we'll have negative four. Then let's just go in normal order. So we'll have the zero next, and then the one. Now let's write down our ranges. Or the outputs that are in our range. So we have two, negative three, zero, and five. Now let's just put them down in increasing order. So we'll start with the negative three, and then zero, and then two, and five. So now that we have our domain and range, let's make a mapping diagram that links the inputs from our domain to their respective outputs from the range. So negative four, has an output of two. So we'll match up the negative four with its output of two. Now for the one here, we have an output of negative three. So the one will have an output of negative three. Now with this ordered pair, we have an input of zero and an output of zero. So we'll take the zero from our domain and connect it with the zero from our range. Now for our final point in the relation, we have one, five. So with this relation, the input of one also has another output, which is five. Now that's what the mapping diagram would look like for example four, which shows how the inputs from the domain are related to the outputs in the range.